The Fed is printing like there is no tomorrow, because for them there is no tomorrow. Who cares about the long-term viability of the country? Spend as fast as you can, is how the government is running things. They are using the next cycle stimulus to pay for the interest in the last few stimuli. We'll still pay for it because they'll just divvy it out to special interests now. Additional debt will prolong the bleed. This show is coming to its ugly end. Over the past 13 months of this miracle money printing show, the Fed has added $3.5 trillion in assets to its balance sheet, bringing its total assets to a record of $7.69 trillion. And just when you think it couldn't get worse, together with the $1.9 trillion COVID packages just passed by Congress last month, the White House unveiled a $2.25 trillion infrastructure package, and there is a $10 trillion Green New Deal being put together in Congress right behind the $3 trillion infrastructure package. $650 billion to rebuild U.S. infrastructure. $400 billion to care for the elderly and disabled. $300 billion for housing infrastructure. $300 billion to revive U.S. manufacturing. Without highways, there will be no deliveries. No food, no spare parts. No booze. No meds. No heating oil. Get it now while you can, because tomorrow you can't. It can definitely get worse. Next up is 50% income tax rates. We're the new kulaks, and our property will be confiscated through taxes and currency debasement. An alternate crypto-based economy will develop in response. Be prepared. I'm amazed at how we can throw trillions of dollars around and say it's not enough. Simple. Fire up the printing presses and warm up the helicopters. Stagflation here we come. How soon before pandemic loan defaults begin to hit banks? The stimulus is going to flat screens and Apple watches. Wait until the new taxes on the rich net half what Biden claimed. Always happens. Then the burden for all the spending will fall on those with jobs, as it has for eternity. Of course middle class will pay for it by higher taxes and inflation. We lost any semblance of fiscal responsibility. And federal spending makes up about a third of GDP. So as they borrow and spend, they will applaud themselves with the improved GDP numbers. We can't keep printing money. We are at 45% of our GDP, and that is going to break our system real quick. Get ready people, because the stock market is going to crash and soon. Hopefully soon, the market inefficiencies are insane right now. Real growth is impossible without letting the failures fail. Unfortunately, the government will likely continue to fight the needed crash, so when the crash finally comes, we won't be able to recover. Since when was the Fed about stimulating the economy? By and large, that can only be done via vigorous government fiscal spending. The Fed is only interested in increasing the value of the assets owned by Fed members and their friends. Sooner or later, we need to start staying within our budget and start paying off debt. Some administration needs to have the leadership to do it. I don't want to be paying higher taxes, and they are going to fall on the shoulders of the middle class. Inflation and taxes will be soon coming to our door to collect. Anyone with common sense understands increasing the corporate income tax means the consumers will pay for it. Corporations will reduce capital expenditures, employee benefits, and pass the additional tax on to consumers. Anyone who remembers the stagflation of the late 70s and early 80s knows what's coming. Double-digit inflation, double-digit unemployment, and double-digit interest rates. Like 10 years ago when our credit score as a country was going to be downgraded. And it caused a bunch of issues on the market. We do need to pay off our debt, and we are evaluated at how well we are borrowing money. It is true that we need our infrastructure updated. I drive around much of America, and especially in blue areas, the roads are littered with potholes that take years to fix. However, one reason our infrastructure is in its sorry shape is that infrastructure bills are never about infrastructure but about a slush fund of money given to administration's cronies and bundlers. It was the same with the correctly named porculus package under Obama. There is nothing normal in forcibly keeping interest rates at close to zero in order to run limitless money printing to finance limitless government deficits that will eventually destroy this country's currency and very existence. Noteworthy is the moving of the tax deadline. 
the administration will be able to pass obscene spending without knowing how bad the tax receipts from a year of COVID are. Wait for the triple whammy, bad tax receipts, obscene spending, tax increases that don't net out, followed by more tax increases. I don't think the US will survive economically this spending spree, world reserve currency or not. You better plan to retire somewhere outside the US, low-cost region, with money that is not coming from Social Security. America is done. Stick a fork in it. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. For how long will the US government continue to pump the US stock prices artificially? Everyone knows that the US market is in the mega bubble, it is even more overvalued than tulip mania bubble. The US stocks are insanely overvalued and overbought. The valuations are impossible to justify. For how long can the US government run this fraudulent stock bubble, while corporate revenues are tanking, corporate and national debt is astronomical, the valuations are beyond insanity, political polarization is at max, there are ongoing and upcoming wars, the real resources are limited, economy is collapsing, competition is intense, the stock dilutions are at record highs, and everything is getting worse. China, Russia, and many other countries are set to ditch the US dollar as an international reserve currency. Now there are 100 thousands of companies worldwide competing for $1 revenue. The US companies that barely generate revenue of $1-$2 million are trading at 50-60 to 60 billion market values. While in Asia, the same companies with better fundamentals, 100 times more revenues, are trading at 99% less market value. The US company valuations do not make sense at all. Why would anyone invest in US stock tulip mania while he can buy the 1,000 times better company share for a 99% cheaper price? The US stock market is a major Ponzi scheme designed to patch fraudulent pension systems in the US temporarily. There is no proper revenue collection by the IRS since 2016. Taxes are extremely low, and nobody is paying custom duties. People want more free money without working, more free checks, more capital gains, more stock hypes every day. This fraudulent, no need to work, policy of the US government will end terribly very soon. Inflation is skyrocketing, but the government is lying about inflation. My guess is the Fed plans to print money and grow its balance indefinitely, which is necessary to avoid a collapse of the financial system. The balance sheet and its growth is now a permanent fixture, necessary to create inflation. Interest will continue to be paid by the Treasury, but this interest will be remitted back to Treasury, round-tripped, in order to maintain the illusion of fiscal prudence. When the Treasury allocates newly printed money to people who are in debt, it is a debt jubilee. There is no difference between forgiving debt and giving people free money to pay down debt. People don't seem to understand that the Fed has been doing helicopter drops for quite some time. So far, $7.5 trillion has been dropped indiscriminately, with most of it winding up in the pockets of speculators who have too much debt. But the Fed is not bigger than the market. The more they subsidize debt creation, the more the amount of debt, then the more they have to purchase to keep rates below real levels, which begets more debt, round and round we go. For all the governmental debt created, imagine the amount of off-the-books private debt created. In the 70s, the Fed was forced to follow the market higher, and I think we are starting to see the Fed lose control and fight the market. Social Security Fund buys special 10 years, not at the auction. Banks forced by regs to buy some. Foreign governments used to buy them, but now it is the Fed picking up what's left. The Fed actually controls this number by buying as many or as few as it wants in this episode of Financial Theater. The smart money banks are playing chicken with the Fed. They are running the yield rate up in order to strong arm the Fed into raising interest rates. Powell said they wouldn't hike rates until 2023, but if yields keep rising, they'll be forced to do something. That may not be raising interest rates at first, but they might just start buying their own 30-year bonds to keep the 10 years in check and raise the 20-year. In any case, this is all manipulation to create as much volatility and uncertainty as is needed to unwind positions in tech. 
I believe what we're going to see is the Nasdaq take a long bumpy ride down over the next three to six months. What we saw after every great earnings and guidance beat, Apple for example, was a huge sell-off. I think we'll see that again next earnings season. No matter how good or bad, the tech sector valuations doubled in a year, earnings did not. Apple should be trading well under $100 at current earnings at pre-pandemic valuation, which was also at or near all-time high PE in March 2020. The crime profits always someone. How can we stop this as retail investors? We need a real Robin Hood to stop the nasty game by big institutions. V, the velocity of money has declined from a high of about 2.2 in the 1990s to a bit below 1.5 before the pandemic and to 1.1 during the pandemic. So why is V so low, and why has it been declining since the 1980s? One reason is that the Fed has been pumping money into the economy, but to little avail, because money is not changing hands. Another is that a lot of the money is concentrated among the richest Americans who are not spending most of their wealth. Look at the difference between mean and median family net worth. The larger the difference implies greater wealth inequality, which you can see has been increasing since the 1990s. A lot of the country's wealth is increasingly concentrated in the hands of the rich and the super rich who do not spend most of their money, it's V being zero, because they already own all they want to own. The richest 10% own about 70% of the country's wealth. The economy is awash in cash, but most of it is concentrated in the hands of a few who will not spend it. In contrast, lower and middle income workers spend most of the money that they earn. The Fed's monetary policy has failed. The current Fed chairman is not qualified to do what he is doing by any stretch of the imagination. Yellen must know she is wrong. Her advisor was Tobin. I do not get it. I know we are living in an alternative universe. That must be it. We have somehow failed to teach at least a couple of generations about economics. This is certainly about economics, but there is something greater going on. The violations of the Constitution, minting and taxing powers the Fed has assumed, and violations of the three mandates of the Fed, maximum employment, stable prices, moderate long-term interest rates. All these violations are enjoyed by those who are allegedly supposed to be the guardians. Congress loves the free money, to wit, trillions and trillions in misnamed bills passed by Congress. Vote buying. Congress loves the Fed is off the rails. Wall Street loves the Fed is off the rails. Only a catastrophic inflation will create a people's rebellion to shock the guardians into action. What happened to the Ivy League? They realized that they could sell out to Wall Street. We have been sending our best and brightest to Wall Street for about two generations now, ever since the 1980s. All of that brainpower wasn't designing better widgets or developing better manufacturing technology. It was redistributing existing wealth into a small number of pockets rather than creating new wealth to be shared with everyone. Now we need to beg Taiwan and South Korea to build semiconductor chip factories in Texas and Arizona because we no longer have the capability of manufacturing the latest and greatest technology. Intel practically invented the commercially viable semiconductor chip. Now they are about two generations behind the Asian companies in actually building them. Our auto plants are shutting down because we don't have enough chips to build cars. Yet the stock market goes up and up and up, at the same time that the real economy is sputtering and blowing smoke and slowing down to a crawl. The smart kids all want to become hedge fund managers. Engineers are seen as the dumb grunts whom you fire and then outsource their work to Asia, right after you do a leveraged buyout of the company. The pain is just getting started.